Okay, part A of the AML CTF compliance program uh, that you have or will be involved with. So to put it shortly, part A is the program that includes the main elements that help you identify, mitigate and manage the risk of being used for money laundering and terrorism financing. As we'll talk about in the next lecture, part B is something different. It's where you have sort of certain different elements that coincide with the AML, but with part A to make it a full compliance program. But basically, it's the same around the world. You have a few things in here that basically make up the AML CTF compliance program. Okay, so let's go through a money laundering, terrorism financing, risk assessment of the business or organization. And this has to be regularly reviewed and updated. So this means you need to look at all your risks, all your potential risks, including jurisdictions, product, um, customer, all that kind of stuff and compile it together and make a risk assessment and determine how susceptible to money laundering or financial crime or terrorism financing that you are as an organization and this has to be reviewed and updated. So this is important because it basically it determines for the organization you know how how susceptible they are to money laundering and how much they need to justify in terms of allocating resources to stopping money laundering it goes back to a risk based board and senior management approval and their ongoing oversight of the program so Believe it or not, who controls the AML or the money laundering, the anti-money laundering function? It's usually the board, depending on the jurisdiction, but in most places, it's usually the board. The board of directors, in some cases, senior management, but it's the board of directors. They have total oversight and total control of the money laundering program. So as it says here, if the business is not a does not have a board, uh, part A must be approved, overseen by your chief executive officer or equivalent. So if it's a private company, for instance, it'll be done by the CEO, things like that. That's basically what they're saying. Here's a big thing around the world. Having an AML office or a money laundering reporting office, an AML for officer or a money laundering reporting officer at management level to manage compliance your obligations. So around the world, you have to have at least an AML officer or a money laundering reporting officer. In some cases, both. You, even if you have both of them, you can't have one person do it. it has to be two so you might have an aml officer and then there's one person and then another person is the money laundering reporting officer and then the aml officer is a deputy and money laundering reporting officer now i'll go through these people what they do here is basically money laundering reporting officers oversee the sort of program they are in charge of the direct program and they liaison a lot of the time with i guess you could say uh, writing SARS, making the final decisions on various things around SARS, around regulatory report, around regulatory reporting, all that kind of stuff. So they are basically they run the program. Here's the next one: an employee a due diligence program to identify any new employees who may put the business or organization at risk of money laundering, terrorism financing. That is kind of more of a HR thing when you onboard employees. They do a background check, criminal check. You guys knew all about this sort of stuff. But they are they are required under the AML compliance program to have measures in place that screen employees and their backgrounds, just like we do with KYC. So you're not going to so criminal is not going to come on and abuse the system, but more and more realistically, someone who's not been convicted of fraud, for whatever reason, is not gonna come in and, and have such power within the AML CTF part of the business. This is always a good one I love doing. The AML CTF training program for employees, uh, so they know the risks of your business and the organization for what to look out for. As you guys have probably know, some of you are working in finance, whenever you work in finance or a lot of industries, you have to do training on AML CTF. It's not just, and not just that, it's sanctions, it's trans, it's everything. It's a lot of courses, it's, it's packaged always quite well together. But the point is, is that if you work in any sort of industry where this is an issue, you have to receive some form of training and the AML officer in that case may usually give the training or will oversee the training, more importantly. Consideration of guidance material and feedback from regulator, including anything we have circulated or published about the industry you operate in. Okay, that's just getting material regarding, you know, guidance material from, from regulators, just et cetera, trying to help you out. But that's, you have to kind of accept that. That's part of the, the part A of the AML CTF compliance program. Systems and controls to make sure you meet AML CTF reporting obligations. So you have to have systems and controls in place and resources 
capacity essentially to have a fully functioning AML CTF program, which means you have to allocate resources, money, and you'll have to also have a document that proves how you're able to do this. Ongoing customer due diligence systems and controls to make this is to make sure information collected about a customer or beneficial owner is reviewed and kept up to date. Basically saying you can't just do KYC and then it's done, boom, don't have to worry about it again. You have to have a KYC reassessment program in there to make sure customers are reassessed uh, and uh, obviously determined if they still present a money laundering risk to the business um, and is determined whether extra information should be collected, verified. Ongoing customer due diligence includes having a transaction monitoring and enhanced due diligence program. So transaction monitoring basically is like, if you look at things differently, people get confused with this. So KYC and transaction monitoring are very different. KYC is doing the customer due diligence. Transaction monitoring is reviewing the activity of the customer. Now the big difference is that KYC is done initially at onboarding except for a event driven risk assessment or a sort of normal risk assessment. Transaction monitoring is ongoing for the activity. Okay, And then you have enhanced due diligence which basically means what we're going to talk about now part B, a few things like that. So controls to mitigate well obviously to onboard high risk clients if you choose to onboard them. So that's part A of the AML CTF compliance program.